Good morning. Good to see all of you. Come, let us pray. Father, we thank you that this beautiful morning that we can gather here together. Either we, either we are in a different places, in different places, in different uh, home, and also in church. But then, Lord, we thank you that we can gather together to attend this uh, webinar, uh, which is going to be conducted uh, for four Saturdays. And so, Lord, we thank you that we have this privilege to come together as the body of Christ to attend this seminar. And also, Lord, help us to rethink again about our personal worship life and also the worship life in the church. And so, Lord, we commit all the speakers, uh, all the participants into your hands again. Then, Lord, we thank you that we have this opportunity to worship you as our Lord and also our Savior. We thank you for this opportunity that we can come. And so, guide us and lead us. In Jesus' name, we give thanks. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Drew. Thanks, Chao Leong. Um, I'm not doing this alone. I'm doing this with Christabel. Um, who will I'm interrupt at certain... Uh... <laughs> I'm dragging her into this and I, I'm hoping we're able to do this kind of like a conversation. Yeah, and um, Ben and I have talked about worship, you know, over time at various times, discussed worship. She also happens to be the worship chair, the committee chair for worship at Taman Ujong. So we've had occasion, but even when I was in seminary, to have these conversations about worship. And really, worship, I think, many people take for granted. You know, it's something we do. And I'm talking about corporate worship when we come together, whether it's on a Saturday, Friday, uh, Sunday, most of us have worship services on Sunday. Uh, and because we do it week after week, I think we take it for granted. But we forget that worship is really central to the life of the church. Everything else that we do in church needs to flow from worship. And the way John Stott put it, I like that. Uh, he says, you know, out of all the essential activities that we do in church, missions and evangelism, nurture and care, and so on, worship is the only essential that will carry through into eternity. All the rest, when we get into eternity, won't be needed anymore. Yeah, God will care for us right there and then. Uh, we will not need to be sharing the good news because everyone, you know, the good news. But worship is something that we continue to do. And so congregational worship is really the place where we gather together as a community. And that element is important as well because we, maybe because of, you know, the Western flavor of our education, we tend to be individualists. And so uh, the community dimension kind of fades a little bit into the background and congregational worship is so important for this community dimension. And that's the place where we grow to recognize our identity as God's beloved sons and daughters personally and as God's people, what does it mean for us to be God's people? What does it look like for us to be God's people? And so how we carry out worship, how we move from even before we begin worship, the worship service proper, right until after, is utmost important, really and so it is so that people encounter God. It is only in the encounter that our lives become transformed. Um, not just taking up stuff in our heads, but that personal encounter that brings transformation. So I'm, I'm going to plead with us, whichever part we play in a worship service, to see, and yes, even ushers, even sound tech, and visual, see the worship service as a complete whole. Whichever style is used, 
free flow all the way to a printed order that is set. We want to see uh, worship as a complete whole. Because if we don't, then it gets broken up and people get that feeling of, you know, kind of like a sandwich, uh, uh, those nine layer kueh, you know, one, one layer at a time, so separate, right? Well, um, let me say a little bit about liturgy. The moment people say liturgy, um, people go, oh, call to worship, opening prayer, all nicely printed <laughs> out, all in order and all set. Bell is laughing. Because no, I think people also think, uh, uh, sort of um, associate liturgy with traditional uh, old time. Uh, old time, uh, yes. So even though you do the same things as in a contemporary worship, when once you say liturgy, uh, it's like everybody, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. But really, and uh, the pastors should know this, um, when we talk about liturgy, it comes from a Greek word that actually means the work of the people. And so every worship service has a liturgy. Um, some of us are in worship services that have a free flow. But have you noticed that whoever it is who leads worship, every time that person goes, it's a similar kind of thing. There's a greeting, there's a hello, there's a welcome, there's a come worship the Lord. And... Uh, some form I, of structure. Yeah. There is some so form of I've, I've led, you know, blended or contemporary worship services, and I realize I tend to say a little bit of the same things each time. So there, there is a set kind of thing, and liturgy is really the work of the people. So it involves the whole congregation, whether it is free flow, contemporary, right up to uh, worship with a printed order. And so uh, I want to see uh, worship as a place of dialogue between people and God, people and each other. And Belle, we've talked about this before. Would you like to say something more about, you know, uh, worship as a dialogue? It's, um, I would see it as a call and response uh, um, thing. I mean, we, we, yeah. we speak to each other, let's say, in the call to worship, encouraging each other to let us come before God or something like that. Um, and then we also talk to God in the prayers, in the, in the songs, and God also speaks to us through his word or through the prompting of the Holy Spirit. So it is um, an ongoing conversation between us and God and us and uh, uh, the others uh, in the body of Christ with us, worshipping together. Yeah. And, and that conversation doesn't stop when the worship ends, right? It, it continues out there. When, mm. when we go out, when we are sent forth, uh, we continue that conversation with God in our daily lives. I hope you all do. You know, in your times with God, in, you know, whatever you get yourself into to see God present. And then also with each other, like when we check with each other, when we, uh, how are you doing? That kind of thing. And so that conversation goes on in ways that bring honor to God. I would say that um, the what we have in service could be seen as a big call as well or you know uh, and then when we go out is our response uh, to whatever God has said to us in the service. Yeah, yeah. that's right, that's right and, and then when we get stuck we, we go back to God and say God you know I'm stuck today, kind of stuck today, Let, how, how do we go on and then in our times of devotion with God. So what Ben and I are saying essentially is that worship is our life. We're called to live what is called a worship lifestyle, Romans 12.1. That's what it says. 
And it so happens I've been thinking of it because I have to preach it tomorrow. Uh, so, um, worship, looking at worship as life, we live a life of worship. And so those who are responsible for leading, and here I'm going to say that the team includes everyone, not just those who are standing up there, musicians, worship leaders, churches, but it includes everyone who has a part to play so that people can be brought into worship and to meet with God, to encounter God. So whether you are being a liturgist or worship leader, some churches make a difference between the two. A scripture reader, musician, sound, visual, preaching, the preacher or the usher, uh, all of us need to have this sense of the whole service. How does this service flow? so that we see our part in it. Yeah, then when we do that, we then don't see ourselves as isolated and the service can then move from the time we begin, from the time you enter the church right until you go forth in response to God's call to live out your life, to see that as a whole flow that brings people into God's presence to meet with him and then go out. Because when we don't, what happens is the worship service kind of gets chopped up, you know, and, and people are going, ah. And so that encounter with God gets, I'll say, interrupted. Yeah. So um, we'll give examples as we go on how, things can get interrupted or how things can be made to flow from one to another. Because yeah, I so, think yeah. some might see like, okay, you know, this is an order of service. So it's kind of like a checklist. We have yeah. done this, we have done this, we have done uh, this. Yes. Rather than see that, you no, know, it is a, a, a conversation or a dialogue or encounter that we've got that flows from the beginning to the end. Uh, yeah. Not like, okay, I'm just in charge of this part, the rest, sorry lah, no? Yeah. I just take care of my part. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And, and so when I say flow, I mean how the worship progresses from, you know, right, like I said, from, from the time we enter the sanctuary until, or even arrive in the church grounds, enter the sanctuary until we leave. Uh, where we are brought into an encounter with God and we leave with that commitment to live in God's ways through the week. So churches have different ways of ordering the service. Simple order of songs, uh, then preaching, offering and uh, so on. Others may have a little bit more stuff in the order. Yeah. Um, and then, so whichever style, whichever way we order worship, yeah, we need to have each element flow from one to another so that people are led into being attentive to God and then to encounter him, whether it is through song and some of us, um, many of us have been touched and have heard from God in the songs, uh, through prayer, through scripture, through sermon, yeah? Um, and so when we see the worship service as a whole, it helps us to move from one to another smoothly so that that attention given to God is not interrupted. And something as simple, let me give you an example, something as simple as how we end the acts of praise. Normally, we have a worship leader uh, who does that. For some churches, you may have the same person taking the whole service, you know, leading from right from the beginning to the end. But more often than not, you have a different person who comes in to lead that block of songs, which we call Song of Praise, Acts of Worship, and so on. Um, and I've been in services where the worship leader has done it so well. Uh, the call, we've been called into worship. 
our attention has been brought to God. The songs have just moved wonderfully from one to another. And there I am deep in worship and I'm looking or paying attention to the Lord. And then the music fades off and then the worship leader goes, please sit down. What just happened? Yeah, and, and it's like, you're there and then suddenly you're pulled out of that with a thud. Uh, so a simple thing like that can kind of pull our attention away from God. Uh, and, and so I would say, and, and this is something Jane has always said, and, and I remember talking about this with Jane, you know, in between when you lead you use scripture verses and then you round off with a prayer. Or if you can't think, use a verse from the psalm uh, so that people continue to be in the attitude of worship and prayer so that the next person coming up, and more often than not, it is the person who leads in prayer, can then just pick it up. And people who lead in prayer, liturgists and all that, they also, please sit down, and then people open their eyes. You know, do, uh, begin that prayer. Even when people are standing up, begin that prayer. Take up words from that last song. Um, it could have been, how great is our God? Sing with me. And then uh, from there, we step up and we say, God, we acknowledge your greatness. We, and so people are let down gently people are still in an attitude of prayer and then uh, please be seated as we continue in prayer you know, that kind of thing or you could even have that prayer while people are standing up i think people can tahana, you know so that it's not interrupted yeah uh bell yeah you know, i was going to say that you no know, the main point is not that um you know, you must do this, you must do this. Yeah. To think of the whole service as a flow and uh, be thoughtful in how you want the, the each section to transition to the other so that, you know, um, it doesn't sort of interrupt that, uh, that conversation with God. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, there are many ways of doing it. If, you know, even if you want to say, please be seated after your, what you can say, you know, uh, let us be seated as we uh, now turn to God in prayer or something like that. But, you know, uh, just be more um, intentional and uh, thoughtful about you know, how you move from one section to another. Yeah, that thoughtfulness, I think, is, is what matters how we look at when we come in to take up our part and then when we leave, that really matters. And so that's why my plea to all worship enablers to see the thing as a whole, you know. Uh, and so when we talk about yeah. flow. No, I was also thinking, sorry, yeah, to interrupt. No. Yeah, Not at I'm all. Interrupter today. Um, <laughs> so I mean, even like you know, let's say you are in charge of the visuals or the PA, um, you also have a part to play in that flow. How the slides mm -hmm. change, the the volume, and all that. That yeah. you know does not um, distract from that conversation with God. Or even if you're an usher, you know, uh, some churches. Uh, they have that practice of if people come late, you don't seat them immediately. You wait for uh, an yeah. appropriate uh, time in the service Correct. to seat them. Uh, that is because we don't want to interrupt the flow as well. So, and uh, ushers, if you can, you you also have a, a role to play. Like you know how you seat people. Um, make sure you know where the seats are. Make sure people sit in front so that late comers don't you know disrupt or distract people uh how you greet people when they come all uh you no know, very important because how you greet people when they come sets the stage or the 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 right. or the 
you know, experience, uh, starts the experience of, you know, coming to worship God. Yeah. Okay. That's right. I think sometimes greeters can make or break that person's decision to come back again or not. You know, uh, so so there needs to be a sense, a sensitivity to what the person is. If you know, people like to be welcomed, but someone like me who is an introvert, if it's over effusive, I'm going to oh, okay. So so we we need to be mindful, to be thoughtful of how we do this, and so. When we talk about the flow of worship service, it really begins when people arrive at our sanctuary and are led in. Um, I don't know about your churches, but the churches I've been in, uh, many people are backbenchers, including myself. If I had a choice, I would come in and sit right at the back. Um, so ushers, you need to be discreet about knowing where the empty places are and how to bring the people, especially newcomers. Old timers, they have their regular seats. They'll know how to get in. Yeah. And so when we talk about flow, there is a certain progression because uh, it's not like a concert. Yes, one item moves to another, but it's not like an itemized concert one uh, act after another. And so when worship leaders just lead one song after another, one song after another, or I wouldn't even call it leading, when, when the people up there are singing one song after another, it's almost like a karaoke session. Lah. Except you don't have the little ball jumping on the words. All right, I, I'm sorry to say it like this, but that is what it feels like. The congregation can sense when you are leading as opposed to when you're just singing the song. Yeah. And so a leading is important to be able to um, bring the people. And I like the way Belle does it. Every worship, she does it in such a way that it introduces the people into the song. And Belle, you want to talk a little bit about that? Mm, I don't think there's much to say except that, you know, uh, I just keep in mind that, you know, it's a flow and it's Correct. a conversation with God. It's not an itemized thing. And yeah. actually, I wanted to say it's not just the worship enablers and all that. It helps a lot if the congregation themselves are aware that, you know, this is a of uh, continuous uh, conversation mm. with God from beginning to the end. And, and the worship enablers yeah. are the ones that facilitate it. Lah. But yeah. for, it would be good that the congregation also doesn't see it as an itemized thing, you know. Correct. Uh, look at the bulletin or, you no, know, where are we now? How long before the <laughs> end? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and I'm hoping we have enough people here to become the yeast back in your congregations to be able to do, the, to, to do something like that. And so when we look at the worship service, there are four main movements when people arrive to when they leave the service. So let me just very quickly go through these four movements. The first is gathering. That's when people arrive. Yeah, from the time people arrive, the ashes or the greeters greet them, uh, bring them into the sanctuary, or they come into the sanctuary, get seated, and not to chit chat with each other or catch up, please, but to prepare their hearts. Um, I remember in one church, I was standing with the worship team to pray and in the midst of the press, suddenly there was this wall of noise coming to me. And I'm like, where is this coming from? And I looked up and all these people were chatting, you know, maybe talking about what they had done to the week. It's a good thing to catch up. But that time before service is for us to be seated and to prepare our hearts to get focused on God. So that's the gathering part. And then the call to worship. Uh, formally brings our attention to God. We hear that call to worship and say it to each other. Yeah, so, and then 
um, the opening prayer, the acts of praise, all this from the beginning, which is the gathering. And all these then continue to prepare our hearts to listen to the word. Now, the word consists of scripture read and scripture preached. And we need to take those together. Some churches may have a song of preparation or a prayer of illumination. All that comes together. And perhaps just let me say here that, you know, sometimes we want to introduce the speakers. Uh, it's a little bit disruptive, I realize, when we introduce the speaker just before the sermon, because you've heard the word. And so I prefer to always read the word and preacher come in immediately so that there's no break. So if you need to introduce a speaker, find an appropriate place, which is somewhere during the gathering, right at the beginning uh, of, the, of the service, or have the bio in the bulletin, or even just before the song of preparation or the scripture reading. And uh, I, I, quite a number of churches also say, let's welcome our spirit, then they clap and all that. But remember in that flow, your conversation is with God, yes, with each other, but with God and your attention is meant to be on God. So find an appropriate place. And again, this whole flowing of, of the worship service, looking at it as a whole, will then help us to find that appropriate place. I, I, I was quite uh, surprised. One friend shared with me a church she had gone to, and that's a Catholic church. They never introduced the speaker until right at the end. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. So, so you just give your, your attention to the speaker. And so that's the word where we give our attention when God speaks to us, one of the more prominent places where God speaks to us. And then we're called, the third movement is to respond to um, what we've heard through acts of commitment, song, offering, and even coming up to receive communion. That's an act of response and then finally we are sent forth to continue our worship in the world yeah um it's a it, that's our response to the word we've heard uh, the bible does give us models for this movement as well so you have the tabernacle where you're taken to the outer court prepared taken to the inner court and then moving into the holy of holies of course, in the tabernacle model, you don't go into the Holy of Holies. But if you remember, Jesus' death on the cross opened the way for us. Um, Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 8 gives us that movement as well. Coming into God's presence, recognizing who we are, who God is, making our confession, and then offering ourselves. And so, in our worship, we move from welcoming worshippers to calling them to worship, focusing their attention on God. Yeah, so uh, at this point, let me say something about scripture and sermon. Uh, I've heard some workshops where they've said, yeah, you build up towards a climax, which is, which is the sermon. But let me just say scripture is important. So your first hearing of God's word is scripture. And both form that climax if there is to be a climax in the worship service of listening to God. And so, like Bell said, everyone in, involved in the service is important. So, so what, what I'm going to do now is very quickly, and uh, we're running a little bit of time, uh, how the worship flows from beginning to the end. Yeah, so... Arrival, important, when people come. And people come into worship service with all sorts of things. Yeah, Some may have come very pleased because they've had a great breakfast. Some may have come really moody because they've just quarreled in the car on the way or they got up on the wrong side of the bed. So being aware of this, 
there needs to be a little time before service, five minutes, draw the people, get them to settle down, um, maybe even get them to reflect on their week. What is something they're thankful for? Acknowledge something that they may be struggling with at that point in time, so that then as they recognize it, hopefully, we pray that they can surrender it to God and then be allowed or allow themselves to really worship God and for their hearts to be open. Yeah. And so as we move through the worship service, I think one of the things when we don't see the worship as a whole, we come in in the middle and we go like scripture reader, some of the friendly ones come up. Good morning, everybody when the people have already been greeted. If you were in the congregation, you would have been greeted and you're moving in, you're ready to hear God's word and suddenly there's this good morning and you're, you're kind of moved back, you know, to, to the beginning of the service again. You yeah. Back. yeah. So, so be mindful of that because if you are part of that service already, uh, whoever started the service would have greeted the people. So just come in, read the word, um, know your part in that worship service. Okay. Um, I think some of the more uh, tricky bits are things like announcements. Yeah, Belle? And I think you've, you've shared this one. So can I ask you to... to, to Say something about. It's know. a bit difficult. I mean, it's how you uh, see announcements. Some churches have yeah. it at the beginning. Some churches have it at the end. Correct. Some churches put it in the middle. Um, but uh, I'm not saying which one is right. But as we have been saying over and over again, you have to see what is the appropriate time to put it in your flow of the service. And even if it's in the middle, how do you lead into the announcements? Yeah. And you no, know, um, you could make it in, in how you announce it, you could make it like points of prayer, you no. Know? Let's remember the church as you know, we are having this LCC meeting on such and such a date. So um again, um thoughtfulness la, in, in how uh, what you are doing fits into the whole picture of the service yeah yeah and i think it's important to educate like you were saying bell about you know having the people understand that uh the whole service is a conversation with god i remember uh one communion service this was way before i came into ministry i was sitting down after holy communion uh it was still going on and, and there I'm kind of reflecting on stuff. And then suddenly I find, I heard, hear this voice, hey, you know, the share market went up again. Mm -hmm. like, what was that? You know, and, and there was this uh, conversation about also the price of fish. And I'm going like, huh? Right. So looking at and understanding that you know, communion time being left on your own is really time for you to then converse with God and uh, uh, taking time also to reflect on things you've heard, uh, what you've received. That would be, I think, more helpful for everyone. I yes. think some churches yeah. would be, some churches, uh, what they do to keep the people's focus is to get them to sing Correct. Communion. Yes. Uh, because I've also been to churches where um, immediately after the person goes up to take communion, he leaves and goes home. Correct. Yeah. So you I haven't mean, finished your conversation with God, way. Yeah. Yeah. You know? so, uh, yeah. Talking about this um, service being a, a, a progress, a safe uh, yeah. conversation with God, I think if we all as worshippers have that in mind, then that would also influence our actions and behavior do, during uh, at the worship service, like whether we come late, 
whether we you no know, play with our mobile phones whether we uh-huh. you know um some people say ay i don't want to come for the singing i just come for the sermon kind of thing but the you know that's just it's not the whole thing you you only coming for the you know, uh that that middle part and the the service is not just the sermon or the some people say oh i just come for the the, the singing part which they call the worship part but is the whole no. thing is worship lah worship. Huh? correct not, not just the singing no uh, mm-hmm. i just come for the worship part then okay lah i go home yes yeah um so so the question i would ask to such people is what is worship or who is worship about mm. and it sounds to me it's like it's about that person you know i i just come for what i want mm. rather than come for the whole thing yeah and it's also about the community yeah. worship thing exactly it's the body of correct yeah. uh i think english churches suffer from this a little bit more because of the western influence of individualism mm. yeah we, we, we tend to be i me and myself so i think our time is almost up and so what i really want to say bell and i really want to say is to be thoughtful about how we would do worship how you would do your part in relation to other people yeah and uh, so even if uh, you are going up to be praying uh, for the offering some some churches have the ushers praying for the offering think through your prayer don't just go up there and off the cuff pray yeah and and, and i i hear in some of these churches i hear the same prayer being said same person all right it, like like a set prayer like that yeah think be thoughtful yeah and so and that's why worship enables what you do is an act of worship to god as well you know whether you're reading whether you're reading scripture that's an act of worship preaching is an act of worship uh ushering is an act of worship and so uh, i i would leave you with these thoughts uh, unless bell has any final thoughts to say um, no no just remember the main point i mean it doesn't like we say there's a no the movement from here and if you are the one um crafting the worship order of worship it doesn't mean that this is a fixed structure right. yeah it's a, a, a recommended or a guideline kind of thing but uh, just know why you are putting uh, things where certain things correct there is yeah. it's not just a jumble of uh, items uh, yeah. okay we must have uh, uh, you know um, yeah. apostles creed Uh, so we'll put it you know here because we must have it and so maybe this would be you know uh, just dump it somewhere lah uh, no if you put it in the service you must know why you put it there there is meaning to the flow it's not just a uh, you no know, uh, like a necklace you no know, little pearls yeah. all strung together it is actually a a whole thing lah mm. Okay, back to you, Ju. Wow, that's so good. Uh, thank you so much for uh, sharing that. I think a lot of times we don't have enough of these conversations, you know, about worship, and then we go week in, week out, and we kind of forget what it is, uh, why we do what we do, you know. Um, so just to bring back to what you all shared in the beginning, liturgy is the work of the people. Um, and then it is a dialogue, a call and response. But there's also a question which I think is quite interesting. Ah, uh. mm. how can we make this? Is from Angela. Angela, you want to ask it yourself, or I think we have sort of answered it. Like, okay, uh, we sometimes the worship leader can. Uh, uh, okay, the the thing is that you no, know, how can we make people uh, aware that the service is a flow? I think it it comes from the pulpit law. You could get. Pastor to preach on it, or you know, for if the worship leader is able to lead um, 
in a good way, I mean, in a continuous way, then it also helps, it facilitates that flow. Uh, if after communion, people start talking, um, uh, there are several things you can do, la, like we can ask people to sing uh, so that it gathers their focus or, you know, maybe us, uh, the worship leader can say, you know, as the others uh, commune, can we reflect on such and such? Um, yeah. yeah. But the, yeah, it's hard, you no know? different people have different ideas about the service. Like at the beginning, Pastor was, uh, Yin was saying that we, sometimes we take the service for granted. Not only that, sometimes we think that uh, we are obligated to come and you know, let's just get it over and done with kind of thing. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And I also like what you said about being mindful uh, in whatever we do. Uh, and I suppose even as members of the congregation as worshippers, we are also modeling to mm, yeah. others. And if there's a, what's the word, a, a big enough number of people who are modeling that, then mm. others will also catch on to it. Mm. Yeah. So you were going to say something, is it, Wayne? Yeah, you are muted. I forgot. Uh, I was agreeing. And, <laughs> and I noticed also some churches for that Holy Communion section, they have a video mm. on Holy Communion. So, mm. so it, it draws people to be reflective, to, to be worshipful as well, so that people don't, you know, yeah. But it's, it's education, really, to educate our people. And yeah, and, and like I said, we take worship for granted. We, we think, yeah, everybody should know what it's all about. Thank you so much. I have been blessed. Uh, you know, we... Not at all. My pleasure. Yeah, 